So, I mean, where do you want to start today? Look, it's it's caucus day. Donald Trump picking up massive amounts of endorsements just in the last few days. You got Marco Rubio and a whole host of other folks jumping on board. Um, and here comes Donald Trump, who didn't make the mistake that he made in 2016 when Ted Cruz won the night in Iowa and then hung out throughout the rest of the process. Donald Trump's going to have this wrapped up in a couple of weeks. And again, my number for tonight's 54%. What do you say for Iowa today, Pete? Yeah, I mean, uh, the president needs to hit uh, his 50 percent. I mean, that's the expectation. Uh, you know, high 40s, low 50s, uh, somewhere in there. And he meets expectation. He goes on to New Hampshire, South Carolina. And as you said, two weeks, the nomination is wrapped up. We can focus on the Democrats. We can focus on Joe Biden's agenda. Uh, and compare that to the vision that uh, Donald Trump is going to lay out for us. So, yeah, I think you're you're absolutely right. Uh, within two weeks, it'll be all over if it's not over already. Right. And here's the thing. Once it's the, the key to having this happen, I mean, Nikki Haley may, you know, hang out for a while. I, I don't think Ron DeSantis will do that. She may. We'll see. It doesn't matter. But it opens up the coffers. And all of these people getting on endorsing Trump who didn't endorse him or endorse late the last time around, getting in early now, saying, look, we're going to be on with Donald Trump. It means that a whole lot of money becomes available sooner because the sooner you can say we've got a presumptive nominee, which should happen after New Hampshire on the 23rd, then they can start piling in the money and they can focus all of their effort on one thing, getting rid of useless Joe Biden, right? Exactly. Get the focus yeah. on uh, get the it's on the Democrats, their agenda. So you've got Donald Trump on one side talking about America first, securing our border, getting the economy back under control, getting us unentangled with these endless, pointless wars. And then you've got the folks flying into Davos, Switzerland, on their Gulfstream 550s this week, telling the rest of us, oh, you shouldn't use airplanes. You shouldn't have a car. You should live in a 15-minute city while they eat caviar and look down their noses at the rest of us. It is really quite galling, isn't it? I think actually it's a pretty good contrast right now what's going on as you described it in Germany as to what's yeah. going on in Davos. It's the folks in Davos telling the rest of the world how we should live and guess what? Most of Americans, most of the Europeans, they don't like it. They don't like Davos. Uh, the folks in Davos, uh, you know, describing exactly what what you said. Uh, you know, we want green energy even though it's more expensive and more uh, and it's less reliable. Uh, we want uh, we want to shut down your farms. We want to do this. We want to do that. Uh, and folks are saying, yeah, no, I, we don't think so. And we're sick and tired of the government uh, telling us to do things that really make absolutely no sense.